name is Harriet Glickman. I was born November 17, 1926. Um, I have three children, two daughters-in-law, and three grandchildren. Um, I was a teacher at the time that I wrote to Charles Schultz. That was a number of years ago. <clears throat> Following that, I worked for almost 20 years in the field of philanthropy um, for an organization of funders um, as a program person for, for the funders. And I did that until I retired in 1999, and then I did some consulting to them, and now I'm just here. <laughs> Great. Um, so what was your first introduction to Peanut? Um, like everybody else, it was just reading the comic strip in the, in the paper. And as I said in my original letter, my children were all Snoopy fans or Charlie Brown fans or Peanuts fans. Uh, my daughter was 13, my, younger, my middle son was 10, and my youngest son was 3. And they all loved either Snoopy or anything that was Charlie Brown or Peanuts. So, um, what inspired you to write to Charles Schultz? I figured you, were going to, figured you were going to ask me a question like that, and it has a long answer. Something like this isn't that you wake up one day and say, oh, I think I'd like to do this. My sister and I were both raised in a home where our parents, just through the way they lived, kept us understanding our role in the world and a sense of responsibility for others. And it was the kind of thing that we took into our consciences without having to be taught. It's just the way we lived, the values that we had, respect for other people, all of which were taught by our parents. <clears throat> in the early days, our parents were marched in demonstrations for uh, rights for workers, for unions. Um, I have a vivid memory. I was quite young. This is a long answer um, of the Republic Steel Strike, which I'm sure you young people have not heard about. It was eventually called the Republic Steel Massacre. It was a strike by the steel workers, and troops came in, and people were shot. Our family doctor, who was a friend, immediately went down. Our parents went down. And I remember them coming home and talking about it. And that's when I was very, very young. There were all the issues, so many issues through the years, that I felt needed my, my involvement. And uh, I did that until then I had small children. And um, what I was able to do at that time was write a letter. However, that letter was the result of my whole life. It was seeing racism in this country, knowing that no matter what, there was ugliness and violence. And my little letter was nothing compared to the little girl who was stood in the doorway to integrate a school with crowds of people spitting at her and throwing things at her. So it all, it was the history that went into putting that letter together. And I was thinking of something, <clears throat> as I say, both my sister and I grew up in this atmosphere. My sister is an actress and um, about 27 years ago, she and a group of other actors put together something called non-traditional casting. Because at that time, minorities, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, were maids, gardeners, nannies, um, sweepers of the, of the floor. Um, and their goal and intent was to, they put on productions with mixed casts to show people of different, different ethnic groups performing. And so, and they eventually, the organization is now called Inclusion in the Arts, 
And I was thinking about it last night, that in a sense, this little inclusion of a Negro into a car comic strip was a very tiny bit of what they're doing in to include ethnic minorities and now disabled people in the same way in, in the arts and theater and the motion pictures. And so it's a very long answer to a question, but that's really how it came about. I cared deeply. It was after the assassination of Martin Luther King and the frustration and the anger. And the sad thing is that that was 1968. And just in this last week, the whole country's been roiled up again about Donald Sterling's racism, which is the kind of thing which is under the surface and has been in a little way under the surface until the election of, of the first black president when the ugliness came back again. So that was 1968 and this is 2014. And we've made some progress, but not enough. What was your reaction when Charles Schultz responded to this letter that you oh, wrote? I was in? jubilant. I was so excited. I mean, first of all, he was an icon himself. And um, the fact that he actually read my letter and paid attention to it and thought about it, um, I was very impressed. Um, as you may know from the materials that you have on hand, he wasn't the only one that I wrote to. I wrote to Alan Saunders, who did this comic strip called Mary Worth. And um, it, we ended up having a, a communication by letters for two years because he was very thoughtful about it. And he said that he and his partner had actually thought about doing something like this, but they were sure that the syndicate would drop them. And at the same time, he told me his son, John Saunders, was doing a strip, which I don't know where it appeared, it wasn't in many places, um, where he had adults like um, detectives and so on, and he had black characters in it. And I, I had not seen it, and I'm sure it wasn't seen by many, but at least somebody was doing it, but he never, he was unable to do it. However, he did include at one point a young um, Hispanic woman. And I wrote him a letter to tell him I was happy to see her. Of all of the cartoonists that you could have written to, what made you select um, Saunders and Schultz? Um, first of all, because Peanuts was the most important comic strip around. Uh, Mary Worth had been around for all the years that I could remember. Um, and I think I wrote to a few others. I have it in, the, in that Franklin thing. Um, I, there, were, there was one. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I have it written down somewhere. But at the same time, I was writing letters about violence and television. I was very concerned about that. When you have young kids, that's what you care about. And um, so I guess letter writing was one of the things I could do while raising children. OK. Um, so one of your letters, um, in one of your letter, in one of the correspondence pieces, Schultz writes to you to mm -hmm. look for a new character that he's added to Peanuts. So what was your reaction when the first Franklin strip? I called out? everybody in the family. <laughs> uh, we were, you know, everyone knew about it among my friends and family, and it was very exciting because I said to my children, "This is a lesson. One person can make a difference. It's a very little difference, not." earth shaking, but it's a difference. And I think it's a lesson that helps young people to know they can make a difference. And I think you may recall that in the beginning when, when he was not too comfortable with the idea, I did ask him for his permission to um, send his letter to, to some friends and, and I, the letters you have also from Ken Kelly and Monica Gunning. Um, and Ken is still around, and he was delighted to hear about this. But I want to say to my thanks to Nat Gertler, uh, because 
it was all those years before and suddenly when the, when the Peanuts collection came out, it was uh, like it all opened up again. And I also want to thank William Bell, who's here today, because when the book came out, as you may have noticed, the, my letter was in it with my address. And at first I thought, hmm, it's not so wise, but it turned out to be not a problem at all. And that's how William found me. And he wrote, he said he had grown up with Franklin and um, he just really became like Franklin's uncle. And as you probably know, he's been putting on presentations about Franklin in Ohio, in libraries, and he did one at Ohio State University. And he sort of pushed the museum, I think, through the years to please do something about Franklin. And, and uh, so I really thank him much for this and I'm so happy that he's here today. In the course of looking um, at the strip and, and Franklin, what are your feelings on Franklin as a character and how he's developed? It's interesting because it, um, it caused a lot of discussion. I don't know if you saw, you know, some of the publications and things that came out. Schultz sort of gently brought him into the, into the page. Um, he was just one of the kids. And I think it was a good idea. Um, some had said he came in, there was no personality, he was just there. But I, I think in this situation he did the wise thing and handled it very well. Um, but even that, I'm sure you know somewhere here in the archives, there's a letter from the Deep South, from the syndicate, from the newspaper, to the United Features Syndicate saying, do not send us any more strips showing a Negro in the same classroom with white children because we are fighting or we're being forced to have integrated schools, some language like that. And they were absolutely determined that they would never show this with Franklin in it. So as mild as it was, as unobtrusive as it was, it still caused a huge furor in some parts of the country, a little picture this big of a kid who was not quite as light as the other characters. Mm -hmm. So there were articles, as you know, a Roman, Roman Catholic bishop wrote an article, or Newsweek had articles, um, the Los Angeles Times had articles about the introduction of Franklin. All it was, it was just this little boy. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about while we have you here? Mm -hmm. Or recording your, your memories about? <laughs> um, no, other than, oh, that's a good other question. than yeah. to hope that anybody who sees the exhibit down there, young people who see it, look at it in the context of today and say, there's still work to be done. There's still much that has to be done. And that's about it.